Hi, I'm John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Fastening Academy. Some students have asked me about scoring laps and whether that's advisable or how to do it. And lap scoring is installing tiny grooves into the surface of a polishing lap. So wait, I just got this brand new lap with a perfect factory surface and now I'm going to cut grooves into it? Well, maybe. Not everyone chooses to score their laps, and some faceters find it unnecessary or even undesirable. A lot of people swear at it rather than buy it. Imagine watching a polishing lap through a microscope, and the lap surface is smooth and firm, and it's coated with a thin film of liquid and microscopic particles of polish. And as the lap comes around, polished particles and maybe a little swerve from the stone, it builds up a little bit and forms tiny balls. And as those are carried by the lap, they may scratch the facet being polished. And this usually causes what we call cat hair scratches, little tiny thin guys that can be very aggravating to get rid of. So imagine watching through that microscope again, and this time the lap surface has lots of tiny little grooves in it. So as the polish forms a little ball, and as the lap is coming around, the little balls of polish and swarf get pushed down into the groove and that allows them some space so they don't press against the surface of the stone so much so they don't scratch. At least that's one of the theories behind why uh, scoring the lap seems sometimes to reduce cat hair scratches. It's really important that a person not score their lap too much or if you have big gouges in there, great big scrapes, the edges of the, of the score mark itself could be jagged or sharp or hard and they could actually scratch more. They also could, if there's too much of a groove there, maybe catch the girdle facet or something and actually knock a stone off the top. So that's not the kind of grooves that we're talking about. The scoring a lap is much smaller grooves than that. If you choose to score a lap, you want to be careful not to do too much. For most of my composite laps, I just use a 120 grit wet type sandpaper and a nice plastic block. And I carefully sand just enough to dull any areas that have become shiny because the surface of the lap can get polished as you're using it. For metal laps, you do not want to use sandpaper, not even that wet type. And some composite laps, you may want to score a little bit more than that. So sometimes I'll use about a 45 millimeter long piece of a broken off end of a new hacksaw blade. Don't use an old one with the dull points. You want those little sharp guys to be really sharp. I recommend using one of the metal cutting type blades with 24 teeth per inch. You want lots of little scratches, not a few <laughs> really deep gouges. And if you keep the rest of the blade after you break this, snap this piece off of a cheap hacksaw blade, you'll have a lifetime supply. Some people, they like to score their lap in radial lines, dragging the tool straight out from the spindle nut on a stationary lap like this. I like to score mine on the machine and with the machine running at slow speed. I reverse the machine from the usual direction, like this. You can see the curved lines I'm going to get, like the lines the Sharpie leaves on the lap. This is so when polish is on the lap, turning in the normal direction. If the scoring has any effect at all on the polish, it's going to be pressing the polish inward rather than spinning it outward and off the lap. I hold the scoring tool firmly and just scrape the lap rapidly as it's slowly turning. When the surface of the lap is pretty evenly covered with small and shallow scratches, that's enough. To make sure the lap is really clean and to make sure the edges of these little score marks aren't too abrupt, I use the same sanding paper and block that I usually use and give the lap a quick once over under running water. Then I scrub the lap with a nylon brush and spin it dry on the machine. Never dry laps with rags or towels. You'll invariably cause contamination that way. Just spin them for a minute and they'll be dry. You can see that I haven't even removed the Sharpie marks, so I couldn't have sanded it very much. Just a touch to make sure there's no sharp edges. This is a lap I use for quartz using oxide polishes like my Vanilla Voodoo. 
it's not strictly necessary to score like this. And the more sparing you are with oxide polish, polishes, the less you will find this sort of thing useful or necessary. Like I said, it's most helpful during learning when people tend to overload the lap with polish because that can tend to cause that balling up. Just remember that scoring is also like polish and that you usually need way less than you think you need. This video demonstrates extremely aggressive lap scoring. I can't imagine doing more than this and having it work out well. So have fun and enjoy a great polish. In the meantime, remember to comment below and to visit the Faceting Academy website where more videos and learning opportunities are always coming soon. I'll see you there.